So the larger this channel grows, and the more subscribers it accumulates, the more zealots tend to show up wanting to point fingers and leaving comments such as, Brother, magic is from the devil. Seek Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. So ye, I'm gonna say it. Jesus is the only way. All this magic leads to nothing. Perhaps you will get some demonic presence around you at the most. Since we also made 10 satanic YouTube channels that will give you the creeps. Number 8, Mind and Magic. You know, which is bullshit because if you're going by subscriber count, I should be at least number 5. Putting us all the way down at number 8. The nerve. And there was another really good comment that I wanted to share. But it has since been deleted after I responded with what I'm about to reveal in this video. So, is magic necessarily satanic? Or is that just a myth propagated by the religious? All this and more on the flip side. There's no shortage of Bible verses that seemingly condemn occult magic, witchcraft, and sorcery, which are often referred to as the zealots come forth to pass judgment and condemnation on those practicing the arts. I find it rather amusing that they forget Matthew 7, 3. You hypocrite, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the log in your own eye. The religious zealots are very selective when it comes to following the Bible and scripture themselves. They only really have interest in sitting on their high horse, pointing fingers and judging others. And so they'll ignore all the passages that say they shouldn't do that. And we've talked about that before. But do they have a point? With so many verses seemingly condemning magic and sorcery, isn't it an open and shut case? Well, it would be, but there's a huge problem. And it's one that you'll never hear them bring up. It's the reason that one viewer deleted his comment after I responded to it. See, the Bible seemingly condemns these things, the original Greek word used in the scriptures before it was translated to English was pharmakia. And pharmakia means drugs. It's the word that pharmaceuticals and pharmacy are derived from. And so when the original text was translated into its many English variations, the original word pharmakia was translated into sorcery and witchcraft. So for any of you religious zealots out there on prescription medications, you are practicing the sorcery that the Bible condemns. Perhaps you're diabetic and need to take insulin. Oh, pharmacia. Or perhaps I just gave you a headache and you want to take some aspirin. Oh, that's witchcraft. Better pray for forgiveness, you wretched sinner, you. But, you know, you can just Google pharmakia and find this out. A quick search brings us to this page. The Greek word pharmakia literally means drugs and appears five times in the New Testament. So they were even selective about changing the word because the original word does appear in the text. Pharmakia is translated into our English Bible as either witchcraft or sorceries. We also get our English word pharmacy from the Greek word pharmakia. In each of the above five passages, pharmakia or drugs is listed as a work of the flesh of man as opposed to the spirit of God working in us. On down a little further. The King James Bible translators translated pharmakia as witchcraft because almost no one but witches and sorcerers used drugs 400 years ago. Drugs were most commonly used in pagan worship to hallucinate and to try to get in touch with evil spirits. 
This can be serious stuff. In Revelation 21, 8, God says that people who are continually characterized by drug use will have no part in the kingdom of God. So this religious site tries to explain this poor translation because there's a big difference between magic and drug use. <laughs> they are certainly not the same thing. But they try to explain it as, oh, well, we just lumped it all together because only witches and sorcerers use drugs. Now, I think it's more likely that they wanted to keep you from doing magic so that you wouldn't have any communication with the divine and you wouldn't have any further use for them. It's a deception. And so the real sorcerers who the Bible actually condemns can continue to make and peddle their drugs, especially in today's age. Now, many people think that when the New Testament speaks of drug use, that it is only talking about illegal drug use. But I believe it is also speaking of those people who call themselves Christians but are relying on legal prescription drugs. Well, of course they would believe that. They're very selective in their use of the Bible. Well, that just means illegal drugs. And those illegal drugs could be made legal tomorrow. And the legal ones could be made illegal tomorrow. By man. I have even seen a person who was supposed to be heading up an addictive habit deliverance ministry who had diabetes but refused to alter their eating habits but instead chose to rely on an insulin pump to control their sugar levels so the person could eat what they wanted and admittedly said so. But you get the point. Anytime you alter a word, you alter the original meaning. And this is the big problem with having so many Bible version translations. They claim that it's the Word of God, but yet they have no problem altering the Word of God to suit their own purposes. If you change the Word of God to your words, then it's no longer the Word of God, it's your words. And this is what they have done. They've changed the original meaning. And it's worked surprisingly well for them. Most religious zealots today are totally ignorant of this. They don't know. They only repeat what they've been told like a parrot. And they'll try to defend it by saying it's the same thing. Well, no, it's not the same thing. I'm not popping pills in the middle of my magical operation. I'm just not doing it. Yet, they want to call it the same thing. Again, totally selective. See, when Moses, Solomon, or Jesus perform magic, they call it miracles. When you perform it, they call it satanic evil. And then they run off to the doctor to get their meds at the first sign of getting sick. Now, if you're on prescription medication, I'm not saying that you should stop taking your meds. That would be reckless, foolhardy, and irresponsible. There are some medications out there that are simply dangerous to stop taking all of a sudden. You have to be weaned off of them. So I don't want anybody thinking, oh crap, i got to stop taking medicine. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that they changed the original Greek word pharmakia into witchcraft and sorcery. And how you deal with that is entirely up to you. So anytime you come across these biblical passages condemning witchcraft and sorcery, change those words to pharmakia if you want the original meaning. I hope everyone's learned a little something today, and if I've helped any zealots to climb down from their high horse, all the better. So, that will about do it for today. I will be back soon with an all new lesson so until next time, this is Freder Xavier saying see you then. Break it.